the Plumbing and HVAC Internet Marketing Show. Discover how to market your plumbing or HVAC business online. From SEO and PPC to Google Maps, reputation management, and social media marketing, we share the ideas and strategies to get your phone ringing, trucks running, and business booming. All right. Well, good good afternoon, good morning, depending upon what part of the country you're visiting us from today. I am super pumped to be talking about one of the topics I love, which is pay-per-click advertising, paid search, Google AdWords, whatever you want to refer to it as, and really how to accelerate your lead flow within your plumbing or HVAC business with PPC or pay-per-click advertising. Now, this is part of our digital dominance method all about how to maximize your lead flow online, how to truly dominate your uh, local service area online. And the digital dominance method, we really unpack everything you need to do to do that, right? From SEO, pay-per-click, retargeting, paid directories, repeat and referral strategies, social media, pay-per-your lead services. And over the last couple months, we've been unpacking each one of these. And this month, we're going deep on PPC and paid search in specific. So if you missed one of those sessions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to send you the information on how to set up your website for conversion or how to optimize for the search engines or, or Google Maps. And stay tuned as we roll out new sessions on some of these other topics that you should be aware of and that you'd probably be interested in learning more about. But today, it's all about paid search. It's all about really leveraging Google AdWords specifically to generate high quality leads and unlimited scalability uh, in terms of lead flow within your plumbing or HVAC business. Now, I am gonna ask for your undivided attention. You know, in today's, more, in today's world, it's so easy to get distracted, right? We've got our cell phones buzzing at all times. We've got, if you're anything like me, we've got multiple windows open or multiple screens where, you know, you've got one screen with the email and another screen with a dispatch board or whatever else you've got going on. I'm gonna ask that you turn off your cell phone, go ahead and shut it down, shut, up, shut down Facebook. You know, if you're truly serious about doubling or tripling the amount of leads that you're generating in your plumbing or HVAC business, then this next 60 to 90 minutes are mission critical for you. And what I found is when you're completely focused on something, you give it your undivided attention, that's when you get the most value from it. So that's what I'm asking for you. You've joined me on this session or you're listening to this after the fact. Just give it your undivided attention here for the next 60 minutes. And I promise I'm going to add tremendous value and give you some insights on how to generate more leads more cost effectively. So here's what we're going to cover today. First of all, we're going to talk about why PPC is the key to unlimited scalability in terms of lead flow for your plumbing or HVAC business. I'm going to share live examples of PPC campaigns generating between 5 and 15 time return on investment for real plumbing and HVAC companies just like you. You know, the, the main concern or feedback I get from plumbing and HVAC companies is, yeah, they tried pay-per-click. They did it through, um, you know, Reach Local or they did it through one of the Yellow Page companies or they tried to do it on their own and they spent a lot of money and they had no return on investment. So they, they basically have thrown in the towel and said pay-per-click doesn't work. Well, that's what those case studies are for. It's really show you that when done correctly, it can generate a very consistent, very manageable return on investment. And then from there, we're really going to break down how to set up and structure your pay-per-click campaign for maximum return on investment and minimum cost per lead. So I'm going to dive into the KPIs you should be looking at, how to structure the campaign, really what you should be looking at from a landing page and tracking perspective to do that correctly. And so whether you're just looking to learn, right, you want to understand how it works, you want to understand what the key fundamentals are so that you can hold your whoever handles it for you accountable, or whether you're actually looking to, to do this on your own, you're going to get tremendous information and tremendous insights from today's session. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to give you the top seven questions you should ask any person handling pay-per-click for you to make sure that you've got the right structure in place. So stick around with me to the end if you're, if you're looking to have someone do this for you, if you already have somebody else doing it for you. I'm also going to give you a couple other uh, bonuses for sticking around. I'm going to give you the visual of the digital dominance method, which really outlines all of the things you could and should be doing to maximize your lead flow online. I'm going to give you our um, ultimate plumbing and HVAC online marketing checklist, 
which kind of breaks down everything from the digital dominance method in a checklist format to help you find, well, hey, wait a minute, I'm not doing this. You know, I could be doing emails in this way, or I could be, you know, leveraging paid search in this way. So that checklist really just helps you find those opportunities that you could be tapping into. And specific to paid search, one of the most important things is to understand what the keywords are that you should be focused on that are going to generate good traffic, but also good lead flow and manageable cost per, per lead. So we're going to provide you with our list of the most commonly searched plumbing and HVAC related keywords, which we spent a lot of time and energy putting together. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you exactly how to get all three of those bonuses. So these are my ethical bribes to stay with me um, throughout the course of today's session. So real quick, a little bit about who we are and why you should listen to me. Well, I am the author of the Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Plumbing and HVAC Contractors, uh, as well as uh, the best-selling book on internet marketing for plumbing and HVAC, How, How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right. Um, I'm an active member of PHCC, QSC, Nexstar, Service Roundtable, ACCA. Uh, we're a Google certified partner managing literally over a million dollars annually, uh, quite a bit more than that now in, in Google AdWords, only for plumbing and HVAC companies. We don't work with any other industry. So we've got a lot of data and a lot of um, experience running these campaigns and managing the, the metrics. Um, I've spoken at a lot of the industry association events like PHCC, QSC, um, Service Roundtable most recently uh, at the last uh, Service World event. Uh, my articles are published in Plumbing and Mechanical, HVAC Insider, and uh, I would say probably more than any of that stuff though is, again, I've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of plumbing and HVAC companies in some of the most competitive markets in, in, the, in the world and been able to see them go from virtual obscurity online to the point where they're now the dominant players, many of them getting hundreds and hundreds of calls every single month via the internet. And um, I'm honored to say I've seen some of these guys see a million plus top line growth as a direct result of implementing some of the things that, that, we, that we're going to be sharing with you on today's session. So, you know, what I'm sharing with you is not based on theory. It's not based on something that I read somewhere. It's based on real world experience working with plumbing and HVAC companies just like yours and getting the, you know, getting the results and getting, getting things done. Um, <clears throat> this is a picture of our team. You know, this is what we do every day. We eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff. And uh, we're completely passionate about helping plumbing and HVAC companies truly maximize their lead flow, truly increase their sales and their revenue, and grow their, their businesses. Um, you know, so if you're interested in talking with us about having us manage your internet marketing strategy or run these pay-per-click campaigns for you, we'd love the opportunity to chat. So let's dive into the, uh, the meat and potatoes, the core content here. Uh, first of all, I want to lead with why PPC should be part of your internet marketing strategy. You know, our company name is Plumbing and HVAC SEO, right? Search engine optimization. So we lead with making sure you've got a good website that's built to convert and that actually ranks in the organic non-paid listings. And I've done a, a you know, deep dive information on how to optimize your website, why paid uh, organic search is a, is a tremendously powerful play. So you might say, well, why is he talking about pay-per-click? Why is he talking about this stuff? Why should we even be, be thinking about it? And so there's a couple reasons. The first is with paid search, you can start showing up quickly. Like within 24 to 48 hours, you can set up a campaign, bid on some keywords, and start showing up in Google's pay-per-click listings, the top three above the fold. Um, with SEO, it takes some time, right? Assuming you're, 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 you're either just getting started or you've only been in business for a couple of years, you can do SEO, right? But you're going to have to set up a website. You're going to have to write content. You're going to have to get indexation. It takes months and sometimes years to get great results via SEO. So one of the reasons we believe so heavily in pay-per-click is because it's something that happens quickly. And I think that there's a great synergy between SEO and, and pay-per-click. And when done correctly, that can have a synergistic effect. The other reason it should be part of your online marketing strategy uh, is because it gives you the opportunity to show up as often as possible where your customers are looking. Um, let's face it, with organic, you might only be able to show up you know, one or two times on the first page for certain keywords. And 
if you if you run a paid search campaign, you can show up in the paid listings, you can show up in the map listings, you can show up in the organic listings. And so it gives you another placeholder, another eyeball in front of the customer when they're looking for what you do. So to me, that's a no brainer, right? If they're right now directionally looking for your services, you want to show up as often as possible. And having a paid search component to your online marketing strategy, it gives you that additional placeholder. It also gives you the opportunity to show up for non-geo modified terms. So a lot of what we do within SEO is making sure you're ranking when someone types in your city plus your service. So, you know, Dallas plumber, Dallas AC repair. Um, but oftentimes, especially with mobile phones and kind of the way people are moving, they're not putting a geo modifier. And so paid search gives you the opportunity to show up for something as basic as plumber, plumber near me, plumber in my area, as long as they ran that search in your service area. And you can set within pay-per-click any, any demographics you want. You can set a 10 mile radius, you can set a 50 mile radius. You can say, I only want my ads to show up for people in a 10 mile radius that are homeowners with a certain ho household income, right? And so it just gives you the ability to show up for more keywords than you could potentially show up with without a paid search campaign. And what I really like about it, and why I really think it should be part of your overall internet marketing strategy as you grow and as you scale your plumbing and HVAC business, is that it gives you unlimited scalability. There are hundreds and thousands of people searching for plumbing related services and HVAC related services every single month, right? And so within organic search, we can get ourselves ranked and we can optimize and we can finesse the, the algorithm to rank as well as we can. But there's, there's really a time frame from when we do something to when we start to see the result of it. With paid search, we have almost a knob that we can turn up as we grow. So if we get two or three new trucks and we've got technicians that are standing by, pay-per-click gives us the ability to say, okay, let's put some additional dollars. As long as we're spending those dollars efficiently, we're, we're managing our cost per lead and we know we can generate a return on investment, let's scale that up, right? Let's spend a little bit more in paid search. And so that's what I like about it is it gives you this ability to quickly turn on a campaign that can start to generate leads within a matter of days instead of a matter of months and it gives you something that you can ratchet up or really even ratchet back if for some reason a technician's out that day or out that month uh, and you're down a guy or for some reason there's some massive influx in deals coming into your business you have the opportunity to say hey you know what i don't need the extra calls right now i don't need to be paying on a per click basis so it gives us the opportunity to scale that back so does that make sense Put in the comments box, let me know what your thoughts are on you know, why I really think pay-per-click should be part of your overall internet marketing strategy. We've got a great group here. I want to make this as live and interactive as possible. So just post in the comments, what do you like most about what I've shared so far? Home says, yep, it makes sense in a big way. Jonathan says scalability, the ability to, specific, to target specific areas. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about why most pay-per-click campaigns fail. Um, here's the, the elephant in the room, and I'd love to hear from you guys. How many of you have done pay-per-click in the past, whether with a third party, on your own, uh, and just kind of got to the point where you kind of have thrown your hands up and said, you know, pay-per-click is a dead end? Um, put, just put in comments box here if, if that's you, right? You've tried it and you've kind of lost belief that it can actually work either because it's too competitive or it's too expensive or you've spent money and it just doesn't return on investment. Ken says thousands, lost thousands in PPC. Uh, Bud's buddy says it's just way too expensive. Okay, and that's, you know, really that's the general feedback that I get from plumbing and HVAC businesses. So I thought it would make sense to spend a couple minutes outlining why most pay-per-click campaigns fail. And unfortunately, you know, it really stems from a failure to understand the Google AdWords auction process and the complexity of the plumbing and HVAC industry. Um, you know, and by that I mean it's, it's not as simple as choosing a keyword and putting a bid, right? A lot of people think that's all it is, right? You, whoever bids the most gets the top placement and at some level there, there's an aspect of that. But the reality is 
Google's got a complete quality score process where they, they want to make sure the people that are bidding, the advertisers, are relevant to the searcher, right? At the end of the day, Google's a multi-billion dollar company because they, they have hundreds and thousands of people searching every single day from their engine getting what they want, right? So they have to make sure that their paid ads, their organic listings are all serving relevant results. And so to the extent that you can better serve Google's customer by giving them relevant results, they will reward you with a higher quality score and potentially a lower cost per click. And so what I mean by that is if you can be very matched to the keyword that the person typed in, to the text ad that they see in Google AdWords, all the way down to the landing page that they get on and, and they actually stick around and they actually do something that Google deems relevant, they're going to give you a higher quality score. And so with a higher quality score, you can actually pay less per click while still maintaining one of those top three positions, which are the coveted top three that generate the lion's share of the clicks and the lion's share of the leads. And what a lot of, you know, what a lot of companies do that don't understand the plumbing and HVAC industry, they just think, okay, it's, it's a plumbing company, right? And so they'll bid on plumber, plumbing, drain cleaning, water heaters, water heater repair. And you know, at the end of the day, that's all plumbing, right? So they'll have a text ad that's just, hey, if you need a plumber, we're your guys. Click here for same day service, right? And then the, the landing page is just the home page that talks about, we do all of these different plumbing related services. Well, we know based on our experience working with, with hundreds of plumbing and HVAC companies, that there's a lot more complex pl complexity to it, right? So if someone types in drain cleaning, they're having a different need than if they typed in plumber. If they typed in water heater repair, they, they expect to see an ad that talks about water heaters and, and land on a page that's relevant to, you know, you guys understanding how to repair their water heaters. Or if they typed in, you know, geothermal systems or if they typed in AC repair, they had a different need and a different expectation. And so you know, if you've been through this process and you've spent a lot of money and you failed, it might be because there was a failure either for you or the person handling it to truly understand the complexity of the Google AdWords auction process. And oftentimes you set up just one ad group, which is a, an ad campaign or an ad group of, of uh, ads for all your services. So again, that's you did one, one for plumbing, AC repair, drain cleaning, water heaters, AC service. And then they didn't use a specific text ad and landing page for each of the different ad groups and no strong call to action or offer on the landing page. So I'm going to unpack really the way to do this right and why each one of these really will, will drastically reduce the probability of success within your plumbing or HVAC campaign. But like I talked about, right, no specificity to the keyword to the text ad so you you don't wind up getting a high click-through rate, so Google reduces your quality score. So you have to pay more on a per-click basis just to be in the first page, let alone the top three. And then when they do click through, they land on a page that isn't relevant and or it doesn't have a compelling call to action that captures the attention, so it doesn't convert. So you know this is kind of like the, the perfect storm of things that could go wrong within a pay-per-click campaign because you're paying more per click you're not getting the impression share because your quality score is low. And then you're not converting the visitor to the caller because they landed on a page that's just very generic, doesn't have a special offer, doesn't give them any reasons to choose you versus the competition. So you spent all this money to get the people to the page. You didn't wind up getting the call or the web form, so it was a dead end. And really, that's why most pay-per-click campaigns fail. And it's just a, this is just a visual of... Bunch of, bunch of keywords, bunch of potential ad groups, all going to the homepage, no compelling return on investment. So, how do we do it right? And more importantly, can pay-per-click actually generate a return on investment for plumbing and HVAC companies? You know, we've talked about how things can go wrong. You know, really we gotta understand there are hundreds of plumbing and HVAC companies in every city. So wherever you sit today, there are hundreds of other companies potentially vying for your leads in organic search, in pay-per-click, and quite frankly, there's hundreds of people selling every one of these plumbing companies SEO and pay-per-click strategies, right? 
So there's a lot of people searching. There's a lot of companies bidding for those those spots. And there's a lot of companies really just telling you, look, let's throw some more money at this. And so when you look at that as the owner of a plumbing or HVAC business, it's easy to say, well, forget it. I'm out of the game, right? Because there's no way I can win. So I want to share some examples of how pay-per-click, when done correct, can generate a tangible, measurable return on investment. And Will wrote, so what are the KPIs that we should be measuring? That's an awesome question. I'm going to kind of unpack some of those in these examples, but I'll be going deep in that throughout the course of this session. So Peterman Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, they're an HVAC company based out of Indianapolis. Um, I recently interviewed Chad Peterman uh, for the podcast, the Plumbing and HVAC Marketing Podcast, a couple months back. If you missed it, I highly recommend you listen to it. Uh, they've grown to, I think it's just about $15 million per year in revenue in that market, and they've been growing by three and 400% year over year. So they, they do run pay-per-click within their market. You know, we handle their full internet marketing strategy. And, and so, you know, high level, spending about $12,800 per month in internet marketing. So that's SEO, pay-per-click, content, social, the, the whole nine yards. And <clears throat> if you look at this, you can see on the far left, that's their total number of leads generated via the internet, 521 leads. Um, if you divide that into the expense, which is what they pay us, plus their pay-per-click budget, um, it, it kind of divides out to $24 per lead. Uh, now, for the sake of this particular session, I really want to focus on the pay-per-click, right? So out of those 521 leads, 202 of them came from paid search. So they spent about 10K in, in pay-per-click advertising um, for 202 leads at an average cost per lead of about $50, $49.85. So this is plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. Um, so we know the transaction value is a little bit higher. The, the target cost per click can be a little, or the target cost per lead can be a little bit higher for a full service company like this in a competitive market like, like Indianapolis. So let's break down the metrics, right? So Will, some of the KPIs here, right? What, how many calls, average cost per lead, and expected return on investment. I think those are the key things you wanna focus on. So number of leads generated, in this case, 202 leads. Conversion rate, um, so looking at our, our clients across plumbing, HVAC, um, electrical, and remodeling, uh, we're finding, you know, on average, they can convert somewhere between 30 and 50% of the calls that come in into book jobs. So I'm just gonna use 40% as a, as a nominal average. Um, if you go back and listen to a training I did with Joe Grady a couple months ago from uh, the Service Profit Group. Um, he's got some great training on how you improve those conversion rates. How well are your CSRs picking up the phone and converting the lead into a dispatch job? How good are the technicians at selling the job when they're in the house? So we do have clients that are on the higher end of this, but I just use 40 as a nice rough average. So if they had 202 leads at a 40% conversion rate, that would mean they generated about 80 book jobs, right? So 202 leads, 80 book jobs. Average ticket, again, I'm just gonna use a rough average of 650. They do plumbing, they do HVAC, they do electrical. Um, their ticket's probably, frankly, higher than this, but if we just use an average ticket of 650, and we multiply that, 80 jobs times 650, that'd be $52,000 in revenue generated from the pay-per-click campaign, which is a projected ROI of about five times, right? So 52,000 invested on $10,000 spend is a nice, healthy five-time return on investment. So this is on the lower end of what we like to see. I like to see a five-time return on investment kind of as a minimum, right? Because you've got overhead and you want to have scalability within the model to keep the, the trucks running, to keep the revenues going. But how many of you would love to consistently get a five-time return on investment from anything, let alone from your advertising campaigns? Let me put that in the, in the comments box. So this is a plumbing-specific example. This is Falcon Plumbing. They're based in Miami, Florida. Uh, Wendy is an awesome, awesome gal. She runs the company, and um, we've been running their, their internet marketing and their pay-per-click campaign for, for a couple years now. 
But um, so this is the overall, right? 6,200 invested in, in online marketing, 440 leads, average cost per lead, $14.28. Very good. Um, very good uh, from a PP, from a plumbing perspective. So we look straight at the pay-per-click campaign and they had 237 leads generated from pay-per-click. Average cost per lead via paid search, $16.21. So if we break that down, 237 leads at a conversion rate of 40%, still using that same average. That would be 94 booked plumbing jobs. Average ticket, 550. So kind of in the, in the middle of the road for plumbing. 94 jobs at 550, $51,000. Projected ROI, 13 time return on investment. So this is a plumbing example. These are real numbers, I'm not fabricating this. This was last month, they spent 3,800 in paid search and they had 237 leads. So that's a 13 time return on investment. So Will says, yep. Michael says, wouldn't return on investment after expenses, question mark. Um, you know your numbers better than me, right? Um, usually we find five time, five time return on investment will return on ad spend, um, but you know, really, uh, you know your you know your numbers better than us. Um, you also want to look at the lifetime customer value. So once you get into the customer's home and you provide that service call and you sell them a service plan and or start to get repeat and referral business, um, there should be a pretty significant return on investment, even at a five time ROI. Would love to would love to get your thoughts on that, Michael, as a as a follow up. So I want to show one more example, one more case study, and that's uh, Cardinal. They're an HVAC company in Wisconsin. And um, this is the overall, like about 67.19 in overall internet marketing investment. That's our fees plus our, our, our spend. Uh, they generated, last. Uh, this is last month, 264 leads. So we divide that out, it's $25 per lead within HVAC, which is really good. You know, we find that we can go up to $75 within HVAC, still generate a, a solid return on investment. So if we drill down specifically into the paid campaign, uh, $3,729 spend, 103 leads generated. So um, if you guys are wondering, obviously we've got tracking mechanisms in place where we can carve out, this is the number of leads from organic, this is the number of leads via paid, this is the number of leads via Google Maps. So we know they spent 37.29, had 103 leads for an average cost per lead within um, HVAC of just $36. Very good through paid search. So 103 leads, conversion rate of 40% uh, would give us 41 book jobs, HVAC jobs. Average ticket, 750 within HVAC. Obviously that could be higher if you've got great sale selling techs. Um, 41 jobs at 750 would be $30,000 revenue, which is a projected ROI of eight times. So 30,000 into a 3727 spend, eight time return on investment. So again, the, the purpose of this is really just to give you some confidence that when structured correctly, and I'll be kind of walking you through this, a pay-per-click campaign within plumbing, HVAC, or plumbing and HVAC can produce a nice, solid, manageable return on investment with scalability, where you could really ratchet up your spend and continue to keep your cost per lead under control. So just in comments box, tell me what your thoughts are. Any questions on the case study? Um, how many of you guys would like to know that you could get between five and 13 time return on investment from your pay-per-click advertising campaigns? And if you knew that you did, would you not want to jump in and start to do more and more pay-per-click advertising and scalability on that? Will says it's brilliant, awesome, cool. We'd love to hear from the rest of you guys. What do you like best about what I've shared? What do you like best about what I've, what I've showed you? So Brett says, CPC cost per click for HVAC is really expensive even if you have perfect landing pages. You know, your cost per click is gonna be, is gonna be higher in HVAC than it is in plumbing because the average transaction value is higher. So Michael's asking, what happens if, if to the ROI if you use net revenue instead of gross? That was the question. 
uh, we invest in bottom line. Michael, let's jump on a call after the fact on that. I think you know everybody's got a different net that they that they plug in with their their business operations. So you know that's hard for me to that's hard for me to address. But you know, well a well run company with good margins should be able to do really well with this. So James says, do you consider the close rate of the technicians in the ROI? The current example assumes 100% close rate. Great question. Um, and you know, we've toyed with CSR conversion rate and then technician close rate, something that uh, Joe Grady has been encouraging us to do, and we will do that. Uh, this is a blended average. So ideally, it would be an embarrassment if, you're, if your CSRs were only booking 40% of the jobs. So we're, we're kind of blending that you have about a 70% CSR conversion rate to, to, to the tech, and then the techs are converting at somewhere between 70 and 80%. So that brings us to about a 40% of all of those leads should be closed into a, a book job. But very insightful question, and yeah, you're, you're right. I, I'd love to drill that down better. Okay, so let's, let's, now let's unpack how to structure your PPC campaign to, um, to really get these kind of results. Right? What would you need to do, or what would your company that handles this for you need to do in order to make this a reality? Well, first of all, conversion tracking is a must. So what conversion tracking is, is being able to say, out of all of the clicks that you paid for, how many of them generated a call or a web form? Um, we find most PPC campaigns are kind of just done in a vacuum, right? Uh, the company picks a keyword, they set the budget, the money is spent, and they don't have the conversion tracking set up to translate within Google AdWords so that Whoever's handling the campaign can, can know, okay, this is working, that's not working, let's adjust up, let's adjust down based on what's converting and what's not. And so you have to be able to tell how much did I spend, where did those clicks come from, were they plumbing, were they drains, were they water heaters, and then of those, which ones actually generated a lead? Because without that information, it's almost impossible to make the necessary adjustments to be competitive. Right? Without that information, you're randomly spending whatever Google tells you, $50, $60 per click, and you wouldn't know that a certain keyword or a certain ad group or a certain text ad is performing better, right? And so it's that understanding and that knowledge that gives you the ability to make the necessary adjustments to get the, the best performing campaigns, the best performing keywords, the best performing um, ad groups to generate better results. So with that, you have to break the campaign into smaller ad groups targeting the specific services that you provide so that your text CADs can match what was typed. So you want to really break the campaigns down into logical groups. And I'll be sharing those ad groups with you and really what we found to work best within plumbing and HVAC. You want to make sure that you have a strong understanding of keyword match types. And don't forget your negative keywords. So you know there's broad, there's modified broad, there's all kinds of keyword types, and you want to make sure you understand what those types are, how to use them, and, and that you don't forget about negative keywords. Because oftentimes, somebody might type in like plumbing, and if you're using like just a broad match keyword type, they might have actually typed in uh, plumbing jobs, right? They're looking for a plumbing job, and you just paid premium dollar for it. So, you know, there's one thing to, to target that for hiring, but you definitely want to approach that differently than somebody that's just looking for a plumber, right? So you want to make sure that you understand what those negative keywords are and that you add them into the equation. You want to make sure that you write compelling text ads that resonate with your customer, that entice them to click on you versus the competition. This impacts your click-through rate and impacts your impression share. Uh, you want to leverage the ad extensions to make your ads stand out on the page. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. And you want to make sure that you're landing visitors on solid, well-thought-out pages in your site that are built to convert, either a landing page or a page on your site that specifically speaks to what, are, what it was that they typed in. And you have to be doing ongoing split testing, tweaking, and fine-tuning. There is no such thing as set it and forget it in a well-run pay-per-click campaign. You have to always be looking at what, what were the keywords, what got a high click-through rate, what didn't, making adjustments, making modifications 
to the whole strategy. And really, that's what's going to make it, make it work well. So again, don't even think about spending another penny until you have conversion tracking in place. So what do, I, what do I mean by that? Let's kind of break down the conversion tracking essentials. First of all, you want to make sure you've got dynamic number swapping with a different phone number for pay-per-click traffic than organic traffic or even direct traffic. So what that means is someone goes to, to Google and they type in you know, your city plumber. Let's say you're in Eugene, right? So we type in Eugene plumber and they click on, they click on the organic listings. You happen to be the number one spot in organic. We want them to see your organic tracking number and obviously track that as organic. However, if they click on in the paid listing, they should see a different number. And there's great JavaScript technology out there that can tell your website, depending upon how they got to your site, whether it was paid search, organic search, directly typed into the browser, that, that source should spawn a different tracking mechanism. So at a minimum, you want to swap numbers for each of the different sources. Level up from that, you want to have a keyword pool that dynamically swaps so that you can track the keyword back to the, the, the call back to the keyword. And so that's what they call a keyword pool. And ultimately the way it works is somebody typed in Eugene drain cleaning into Google and they click on your ad, you'd have a, a pool of numbers, somewhere between four and eight numbers that are swapping based on timing. So you, you know, based on the a volume of traffic that you have, the amount that you're spending in pay-per-click, 48 numbers is more than enough for a keyword pool. And it gives you the ability within your reporting on AdWords to be able to say, this keyword drain cleaning generated a call, right? Whereas this keyword plumber, for instance, had 72 clicks, but only generated seven calls, right? So having a keyword pool and being able to tell which keywords actually generated a call is mission critical to really managing and, and scaling your pay-per-click campaign. You want to make sure that you're tracking your web forms. Some people will submit a web form as opposed to call, and so you want to make sure that you've got that in place. And again, make sure that the conversion tracking is built into your AdWords campaign to really be able to determine which ad groups generated the leads. So these are the conversion essentials you want to have in place. Uh, Julie says, Julian says we use CallRail for that. Absolutely, that's the same system we use. It's great for doing the dynamic swapping, for being able to drill down to have all of that information pull into your AdWords campaign. So you want to make sure that you have that, that type of mechanism. There's lots of systems that do it, whether it's CallCap or Mongoose Metrics. There's lots of tools. You want to make sure that you have the tool and that it's properly set up so that you can leverage that data to make adjustments or to let Google's artificial intelligence make the necessary adjustments to really maximize your, your lead flow, minimize your, your cost per lead. So Billy, it's a great question. Billy's asking, does that mean we have different numbers for every keyword? No, it's actually a keyword pool. And it's based on, I don't want to get too, too complicated with it, but it's based on the number of visitors you're getting to your site. We find most plumbing and HVAC companies are getting somewhere between, let's call it 500 and 1,000 visitors a month via paid search, right? So it's not that many. You divide that out, you know, it's a couple visitors per, you know, per hour, right? So with keywords pool, based on the timing of when somebody clicked and the number that's dialed, you can tie the phone number from that particular keyword pool back to when the, call, when the click was made. And so that's how you're able to tie the keyword to the call and have the system report that data to you. So, no, that would be crazy. You're talking about thousands of keywords, that'd be thousands of numbers. With a keyword pool, usually you can get away with somewhere between four and eight numbers and, and rotate them evenly based on the amount of traffic that you have to your site. <clears throat> but that's, that's a good question. So what are, our K, what are our KPIs, key performance indicators, as it relates to pay-per-click advertising? The first is your total spend, right? You need to know how much money you're investing in paid search. You need to know your average cost per click. So how much am I spending every time somebody clicks on one of my ads? 
what's my average cost per lead? And this tends to elude most plumbing and HVAC companies where they know how much they spent, they know kind of high level um, what their average cost per click was, but in most cases you don't know easily how much your cost per lead was. And you really need to know that because how can you scale a campaign, how can you go to market without really knowing is this a manageable cost per lead? Is there going to be return on investment? And so assuming you can get those metrics in place, some of the good targets to look for within plumbing, we like to see an average cost per lead of somewhere between $25 and $40 per lead. Go a little bit higher than that in certain markets. You can go a lot higher than that if you've got a great um, business process in place. By that I mean you've got a great CSR team that's been well trained, that's converting at somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of the leads into dispatch, dispatch jobs. You've got great technicians that are closing at somewhere between 80 and 90 percent when they're in the field and a high average ticket, right? So, you know, in a, under any scenario, if your average ticket's like $150 per job, it's going to be hard to ROI, right? It's going to be hard to make return on investment from a $25 to $50 lead. But if you've got those other three things in place, good CSRs, good technicians, high ticket or high average transaction value, you know, you can spend a lot more per lead. And one of the secrets to success in business, and I learned this from Dan Kennedy, one of my mentors, um, is that he who can spend the most to acquire a new customer always wins. So if you look at the guys in your market doing 30 and $40 million per year, and there are guys in every market doing just that, and you say, man, well, how do they do that? Like, how do they grow so effectively? How do they, you know, how do they make it happen? How can they afford to pay for all those trucks and all of that advertising? It's because they figured out how to pay more to acquire a customer than their competition. So, I mean, these are some low-level uh, metrics. You know, you don't want to be spending significantly more than that. You're probably not going to be spending significantly less. But you shouldn't limit yourself. If you've got a great business process and you know you can generate, you know, a five to ten time ROI and spend sixty dollars per lead, why not do it? Right? If there's a return on investment there. So, but so a good a good average target for plumbing twenty five to fifty dollars. Good average target for HVAC between forty five and seventy dollars per lead. So you want to know what that average cost per lead is and know if, if is it on target, is it below target, is it good, is it bad. If you know that number and you can easily see here's what I spent, here's my average cost per click, here's my average cost per lead, I know whether I'm doing a good job or not. And of course you want to know your you want to know your return on investment, right? You want to have at least some barometer to say did those did those dollars invested generate a return? Any questions on these KPIs, uh, you guys? And uh, let me know. You know, so do you have access to this kind of data within your your current pay per click marketing? If you're doing it, um, you know, what do you like about being able to see this type of information as you think about scaling and growing your lead flow via paid search? This is live. This is interactive. I'd love to hear hear from you guys on this, and um, get your get your thoughts. So Chris, Chris has a question. He says, from your previous section, does having inconsistent phone numbers on your website affect organic? So it's a great question, and you do want to have consistency of your name, address, and phone number on the internet. Now that relates mostly to the Google, to the online directories, right? So Google, Yahoo, Bing, City Search, Angie's List, the myriad of other online directories. You want to have that number match what's on your website. So when Google spiders the site, it's finding all of this consistency of how your company is referenced. That impacts your, your rankings in, in maps and organically. Now, what I'm talking about here is using JavaScript to swap based on source. So when Google spiders your site, it's going to see your main company address and phone number. But if they came through paid search, if they came from organic, they would tell the system to swap the phone number. So yes, you can have the best of both worlds, meaning you have your tracking, but you also have your, your consistency of your name, address, and phone number. What I want to suggest you don't do is go out and put your tracking number on Google Maps or put a different tracking number on Yelp. 
put a different tracking number on Angie's list because then you've got inconsistency and fragmentation. So Christian says, how can we lower the CPA, cost per acquisition, if the cost per click goes up? So if your cost per click is rising, you might want to look at quality score. You might want to look at the keywords that you're bidding on. Um, you might want to look at your landing pages um, because all of those things kind of apply to how much it's going to cost to generate a lead. Jonathan says, I think this is awesome. We're planning on setting up some pay-per-click to target drilling in our area, and we know that we are, there are no other companies doing that type of drilling. So we can set that area, use strategic keywords and focus, and keep that specialized piece of equipment working. Absolutely, yeah. If there's something that you do that's high transaction, that you just like to do and you feel like you're uniquely suited to do, that's a great play, right? Some companies run uh, drilling specific campaigns potentially, some companies run water heater specific campaigns, some, some companies run trenchless specific campaigns because you can really drill down on a very specific high transaction value service. No, hey, listen, I'd be willing to spend a little bit more on a per lead basis because I know this is going to end up being a $2,500 job or whatever it is. And so, you know, that's a really smart thing to do. Awesome. Great feedback, guys. Thanks for the questions. Um, Will says, can we measure a conversion on a form if after the prospect submits, we don't send them a thank you page? The form says the same on the page. There's some ways to do it. Um, you know, ideally you would send it to a thank you page and then you'd set that as a, as a goal conversion and then bring that into Google Analytics. Um, there are some scripts you can put on in place to, to track the goal even if it doesn't take them to a dedicated thank you page. So, you know, these are our KPIs, right? You want to have some type of dashboard with your pay-per-click campaign where you can clearly see, okay, here's how much I spent, right? $3,842. Here's how many leads I generated, 237. Mathematically, it automatically divides out. Here's how my average cost per lead, $16.21. Um, what was my search impression share? So one of the questions we get all the time is, how do I know when it's time to increase my budget, right? How do I know if I'm spending enough? Well, if you've, if you've, you know, Google spits this information out for you, if you know how much impression share you had, so 73%, then that means 10% of the time people were searching, but they didn't find you, or you didn't come up in the search result because your budget wasn't enough. So you probably, in this case, assuming your cost per lead is under control and you've got the technicians to do the job, know it's time to increase the budget by at least 10%, right? And so having a dashboard that clearly spits this information out to you um, is probably something that you need and something that you want, something you should have in place. I think the, the next level up from that, in conjunction with having that type of dashboard and really manage your, your spend, your cost per lead, your impression share, is, um, you know, tying it back to return on investment. One of the best resources and tools I know for this is, is the system called Service Titan, which how many of you guys use Service Titan in here? I would imagine um, a number of you. And we know the beauty of Service Titan is we've, we've got specific numbers for our different marketing initiatives and the, the calls ring into Service Titan and then we can see how many jobs got booked and how much revenue is generated down to that level. And so you know, that notwithstanding, you still want the swapping on your website. What you do is set the destination number from your, from your keyword pool to the number in service type, right? Which would be your pay-per-click tracking number. That way you can see, okay, we had 58 leads, we booked 50 jobs, we had 17 sales for $24,000 in revenue on, let's say, a $2,000 spend, so we had a 10-time return on investment. Right? And so that's one of the beautiful things about Service Titan. It gives you the ability to really drill down and go deeper than just average cost per lead, projected ROI, to true return on investment tracking. So Jonathan uses Service Titan. James says we use Service Titan. It's a great platform. There are other great tools out there as well, but I really like the ability to tie that back to the, to the true return on investment. So let's talk about how to structure the campaign. Right? We want to make sure we're broken down into smaller ad groups targeting the various services that you provide so that the text ads match what the person typed in. So what we find is in plumbing, right, we want 
brand campaign, which is all the people typing in your company name, and yes, you do want to bid on your own company name because if you're not bidding on it, chances are you're showing up organically and there's other companies coming up in that search result. So someone types in your company happens to be Tom Jones Plumbing, you want to bid and be in the number one spot for Tom Jones Plumbing. You want to rank organically and you want to kind of own the page for that because they're looking for you, right? And based on relevancy and quality score factors, your, your cost per click from a brand campaign is nominal. You know, you're paying less than a dollar per click versus let's say $17 to $18 per click for general plumbing related terms. Um, you want a general campaign, which would be like plumber, plumbing, plumbing service, plumbing company in my area, right? Drain campaign, you can go specific within drain and drain cleaning to hydro jetting and router services, right? So you can really match these things up, water heater repair, water heater replacement. I'm gonna go into, into the specific campaigns for plumbing and for HVAC, but the point is you wanna have very specifically broken out um, ad groups with the keywords that correlate to those, right? So some pumps, it would be some pump, some preparer, some pump for my basement, um, some pump battery backup system, right? All of those keywords, that's an ad group with specific text ads that correlate to it, right? And so within Google AdWords, you'd have brand campaign, geo campaign, plumbing, and then within each of those, you'd have a different set of keywords, right? And you know, you'd want to use a variation of exact match, broad match, phrase match, done correctly, so that you can really maximize the results from that particular campaign. So we've got specific ad groups with highly you know, targeted keywords going along with each, and then text ads that speak to that particular thing, right? So this is where it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and really a lot of thought to be creative, but for drain cleaning as an example, right? We want an ad that talks to drain cleaning, right? The number one drain cleaning service Cost today, your trusted Mason, you know, drain cleaning specialist, right? You want to be that specific with your campaign. So, some examples of the ad groups that, that I think really would be effective uh, and we found to work well again, the brand campaign, general plumbing, drain cleaning, water heaters, sewer repair and replacement, um, repiping, sump pumps, leak detection, slab leaks, water softeners, water filtration, plumbing fixtures toilet installation repair, faucet installation repair, disposals, backflow testing and certification, septic emergency, after hours or 24 hour service, well pumps, and then a competitive campaign. So I don't wanna, I mean, I don't wanna like read all of these out one by one, but obviously choose the services that you do and that you want more of, and then make sure that you've got ad groups for each. The last one here is called a competitor campaign. Um, and really what that is, is bidding on your competitors' names, right? And there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Um, you cannot use their name in the text ad. Um, you want to make sure that it, it's structured in a way that it, it doesn't infringe on their trademark, but you're still able to show up when someone types in your competitor's name. Um, but to do that, um, usually I recommend a whole separate campaign for it. Usually I recommend... Um, a separate budget because your quality score is going to be impacted by competitor campaign that like they were looking for something else and you happen to come up for it. Um, you have to be strategic with the text ads. And most importantly, if you're going to do it, you have to make sure your team, the dispatchers know there might be some calls coming in for competition and how to handle those calls, how to answer them professionally and how to switch it so that they want to talk to you versus the competition. And I will tell you the competitor campaigns when done well, and done correctly can generate a great return on investment. Uh, within HVAC, right, we've got a brand campaign, AC repair, AC replacement, heating repair, heating replacement, furnace repair, furnace replacement, emergency AC, emergency heating repair, indoor air quality, you can break that down into a lot of different specific subtopics, uh, AC checkups, AC filters, AC maintenance, AC tune-ups, duct cleaning, air handlers, boilers, boiler installation replacement, mini splits, evaporator coils, geothermal, radiant, uh, HVAC specific. So by that, a lot of times someone will actually type in HVAC repair or HVAC system, right? And you can write your text out a little more specifically based on the fact they used HVAC instead of AC or heater. 
humidifiers, air purification systems, thermostats, right? A lot of people are typing in, you know, smart thermostat, Nest thermostat. You would come up with that, you know, for those particular terms and UV sanitizers as well as the, the competitor campaign. So that's, you know, those are the campaigns we find to work best. Um, if you'd like, uh, I could send you these slides that way you have those breaking, broken down. You can kind of compare your current campaign and see, you know, do you have those ad groups set up? So just post in the comments if you want me to send these slides to you. That way you can kind of look at this at a more detailed level. <clears throat> awesome. A bunch of people want it. Okay, so keyword types matter. So I want to talk a little bit about the different keyword types. There's, there's really four different keyword types or match types. There's broad match, modified broad match, phrase match, and exact match. So what's the difference? So broad match, you typed in plumber, you bid on the word plumber without a quote, without a plus sign, without a bracket. Um, it's very dangerous to bid broad match because it could be any crazy combination of keywords that they typed in and you're showing up and paying on a click basis for it. So just because they typed in plumber doesn't mean they were looking for a plumber. Um, they, they could have typed like a six word string that had the word plumber in it. And because you typed it as the keyword you're bidding on, you've just wasted a lot of money. One of the big problems I see within plumbing and HVAC campaigns is that they've got these broad match keywords. Uh, either they did it themselves or someone was really sloppy in setting it up and then just typed in plumber, plumbing, plumbers, plumbers in my area. And um, they're showing up for this ridiculous array of keywords, and um, and they don't even realize it. And they're wondering, man, I spent five grand on my pay per click, and I didn't generate any leads. Well, it's because you were like just wasting money on bad words. Um, modified broad match, which is a little bit better, you put a plus sign in front of it, and you know that you can control what it says. What I really recommend though is um, is phrase match an exact match with a little bit of broad match or modified broad match keyword usage. This really gives you control to see what they actually typed in, to be very specific with what you want to show up for, and to be able to negate keywords that aren't relevant to what you're to what you're looking for. So, you know, just be aware there are these different types of keywords that you can put into Google AdWords that you're bidding for, and if you're not careful, you could wind up showing up for a lot of crazy stuff. But also, if you're too restrictive, like if you just put brackets, you type in plumber, Dallas plumber, uh, that's an exact match or an exact exact match uh, term, you could miss out on a lot of keywords. Because with, for instance, like a, uh, a broad match, someone might type in Dallas plumber. And they might type in plumber in Dallas, right? And you'd show up for that stuff. We're in an exact match. It has to be done in the exact order that you put it in. So you could exact match Dallas plumbers, but if someone typed in Dallas plumber, you wouldn't come up for it. Or if they typed in plumber Dallas, you wouldn't come up for it. So you want to be aware that these different keyword match types exist so that you can make sure you're not leaving keywords on the table that you, you don't want to show up for or that you're not showing up for a lot of keywords that are completely irrelevant. And again, you want to make sure you're paying attention to negative keywords. So how, how you set up your AdWords campaign, you choose your ad group, and then you type in your keywords, right? But then there's also an option to have negative keywords. And a negative keyword is just words you want to make sure that if it's typed, you don't show up in conjunction with. So jobs, careers, car, association, auto. Um, we've got a, a list of like 700 negative keywords that we've added to, to our campaigns because as we look and we comb through these campaigns and we're adding and modifying and tweaking, we find little things. It's like, wow, that's not relevant, so let's negate it. Um, but like a, an easy example of this is, is careers, right? Almost any combination of keywords after, after which the, the keyword careers comes up is probably not what you had in mind when you were bidding on it. So AC repair careers, right, is clearly somebody looking for a job not looking for having their air conditioning repaired. So, you know, if you're if you're trying to recruit, that's one thing, but if you're not trying to recruit, that's wasted money. 
So you want to be aware there's a way to add negative keywords to block out phrases and to block out search terms that aren't relevant to, to what you're looking for. So Will's got a great question. He goes, as we find keywords that convert, do we make them exact match to target to better target them? Yeah, it's a great play to kind of start a little bit broad, right? And then look at your campaign, find out the keywords that are converting well, find out the keywords that have you know a good cost per lead, find out the keywords that are really performing, and then you can either set up a this is more advanced, but you could set up a specific ad group for that so you can laser target it, um, or you know, just bid a little bit differently for that term. Maybe because you're finding the word Dallas Trenchless Sewer Replacement um, is generating a high conversion rate, you know your transaction value is high, you can adjust your bid specifically on that particular keyword. So yeah, I recommend that. As you find the ones that work well, move them from modified to phrase to possibly even exact match, and then you can really control how you're bidding and um, how you're showing up for those particular keywords. So good, good question. So once you've got, you understand your keywords, you've got your ad groups figured out, you want to make sure that you write compelling text ads that, that resonate with your customer, right? They're seeing three on the top, three on the bottom, and they've got a lot of, a lot of options to choose from. You want to make sure that your ad stands out. And the way you do that, that's weird. Hold on guys, a little went too far back. Almost there. Okay, so how do you write these text ads that are gonna be compelling and interesting and make somebody wanna click on you versus the competition? Which is ultimately gonna mean you get more opportunities for the lead, but also so that you have a higher quality score which again impacts your um, your conversion rate. So first of all, less is more. You don't have to write this really extensive, long text ad. We find sometimes the shorter text ads work better. You wanna tell them exactly what you want them to do. Click here, same day service. Really speak to what they're looking for. And if you have a special offer for the service that they searched and you can reference it in the ad, it's even better, right? So if they're looking for water heaters, $25 off water heater replacement, uh, or $25 off water heater repair, right? Say it in the text ad, say it on the landing page, entice them to click you versus the competition. And then give them one decision. So call, fill out a form, schedule, and put it out there for them. Don't offer them too many options because it will compete with their attention, right? So just a couple examples of the, of the text ads that we found perform best, right? So sewer installation done right, $200 off coupon, same day service. On time, upfront, satisfaction guaranteed, trustworthy technicians, listing all the neighborhoods, works really well. Um, top rated water heater install, call today, on time, guaranteed, right? And then of course, all the same, same information. Uh, Top rated AC installation, $2,500 off, same day service. Need an AC installed? No problem. Call now to save $2,500, limited time offer. So here we're speaking to what they were looking for. We're trying to get their attention and we're trying to entice them to, to click on the ad. And then you wanna make sure that you, you, you make your ad jump off the page with ad extensions. So this is more of a technical term um, some of you may or may not have ever even heard of it, but when you run a search, sometimes there's just like three lines. Other times somebody takes up like five lines. And you might be like, why is that guy taking up so much more space in the search result? And it's because they fully leveraged their ad extensions. And so I've pointed to uh, an ad for whole plumbing, right? And we see call out extensions, site links, call extensions, and location extensions. Um, these are things you can add to your ad to make it to make it pop, right? So, number one, trusted Mason Plumber, call Nick's Go Plumbing today. There, there's a call extension. That's where they put their phone number right into the ad. There's a call out extension where you can say, "These are some things I want to add to my ad to really stand out." We found that if you're speaking to your customer avatar and what they really want and what they really desire, 
upfront pricing, 24 hour service, same day, $35 off, that will attract attention. But again, it's taking up more space on the search result. Location extension, where the, where the actual business is located. And when you set up a location extension, you also have the ability to show up in the, in the maps listing, in the above the map listings for, for pay-per-click results. So, you know, you, you want to look and see, are you showing up with an ad with just a couple lines or do you have um, a kind of a meaty ad? And if you do, it's because you have these site extensions in place. And this is just done within Google AdWords. Um, you know, you go into extensions and you can add a site link extension, call out extensions. Um, I've featured the ones that we found work best for plumbing and HVAC contractors. So, you know, you want to make sure that you fully fleshed out your campaign with these different call out extensions. Again, because you're going to take up more space on the page. So, we've set up our ad groups, we've figured out our keywords and our match types. We've, wrote, we've written compelling text ads that make somebody want to click us versus the competition. We fleshed out our site link so we take up more space on the page. The, the next piece is really to make sure that you've got a great landing page. That when they get there, it says, okay, yes, this is what I was looking for. And yes, there's something in it for me. So, you know, if they typed in drain cleaning, take them to that page that talks about drain cleaning. If you can get a video with multimedia, all the better. Have an offer specifically speaking to that. So on this page, you know, we've got honest expert service you deserve, friendly technicians, no hassle from pricing, 100% satisfaction guaranteed, kind of resonating what was in the call out extensions. We've got an offer, $25 off drain cleaning service. So it's not a generic offer, it's specific match to probably what was in the text ad. And then some basic content about drain cleaning and why somebody should choose this company for their drain cleaning related needs. Water heater, water softeners, right? Water softener repair, $50 off water softener repair. Water heaters, $25 off. So the point I want to make with these visuals is make sure that your text ad has a special offer of some sort, has clear call to action, and speaks to why somebody should choose you versus the competition. I can tell you when your landing pages are specific like this, they convert higher. And when they convert higher, you get more leads from the same amount of clicks, which is really the, the Shangri-La to really being successful with your pay-per-click campaigns. So kind of to, to recap the key points, right? The main things we want to make sure we do, got to have conversion tracking in place. It's just a must. Campaigns got to be broken down into smaller ad groups targeting the various services that you offer. Got to have a strong understanding of the keyword match types because that's a big gotcha. You know, if you don't have the keyword match types right, you can be spending money or not showing up for keywords that you probably wanted to or intended to. You want to write compelling text ads that resonate with the searcher and make them want to click you versus the competition. You want to leverage your text ads and our ad extensions to take up more space. We want to make sure we've got a landing page that's well thought out and really built to convert. So just a couple of visuals of this within Google AdWords, right? We want different ad groups for our main service offerings with well thought out keywords to go with each. We want text ads that really speak to the customer and why they should click you versus the competition. We want to land them on a page that speaks to the particular thing they typed in with special offers of some site of some type where possible that resonate with the customer, right? That are like, okay, this was a very congruent process, which is going to maximize our our end conversion rate, which is what we want. More calls, more converted leads. And we want to have a dashboard that shows us here's how much we spent, here's how many leads we generated, here's our average cost per lead, and know our return on investment, right? So in that particular case, 70 leads, 40% close rate, 28 jobs, 550 average ticket, projected ROI seven times. You know, if you can consistently get between three and five time plus return on investment, there'd be no reason not to continue to leverage paid search and to continue to really scale your pay-per-click advertising. So I know a lot of you um, either do this through an outsource provider uh, or you're, if you do it, you're gonna hire an outsource provider. I'd probably recommend that. You know, you guys are plumbing HVAC business owners. You are not um, 
AdWords, you know, you know, AdWords professionals. So whether you do it with us or whether you do it through some third party, I do recommend hiring professionals to handle this for you. This just gives you a great understanding of what to look for and what to expect. So with that in mind, I did want to give you some questions to ask either your current PPC provider or maybe a PPC provider that you're, you're considering using. So the first thing is, how much of my budget is going to go to Google AdWords versus management fees? I think this is an extremely important question. Um, I formerly worked for Reach Local, one of the big pay-per-click management companies, and left. And one of my big qualms there was we would go into a customer or a client and we'd say, okay, you're going to spend five grand a month in pay-per-click, right? Or you're going to, in our service fees. Um, and that was it, right? And so we would spend that in pay-per-click. But there was no transparency on how much of that 5K was going to, to the company to manage versus how much was actually going straight to your pay-per-click campaign, either on Google AdWords or on Bing Search. And I think it's important. You need to know management fee is what it is, right? You gotta pay professionals to do their job, but you also need to know how much is the fee versus how much is going to the actual spend. So, you know, if you don't have that information, that would be a big concern for me, something I would wanna double check be like, hey, well, wait a minute. Why, why wouldn't I be able to know how much of my dollars are actually going to management fees? You want to ask what type of tracking is being put in place? So, do you have Google AdWords and web form conversion tracking? You know, if again, if the tracking is not in place, it's going to be very hard to compete, right? So, if you don't have web web and call tracking put in place, you're going to be a major disadvantage from your comp competition. You want to make sure that you're going to be able to delineate between PPC calls and organic calls. Sometimes you get tracking set up and you've got calls coming in, you know, but you don't know how many of this came from paid search, how many came from organic. If you can't break that out, then all of your calls may potentially be coming from organic and you know, the numbers might make sense. Oh, I'm only paying $40 per lead, but Really, if you looked at your paid campaign, you're at like $95 or $100 per lead. So you want to make sure you can delineate between the two. You want to ask how they're going to track the KPIs. Will you be provided a live dashboard? Again, the average cost per lead is the main thing you'd want to know. Projected return on investment would be something you'd also probably want to know. Will they be setting up specific landing pages for each ad group? Or will the traffic just be landing on the homepage? You want to ask that question. You want to see. How, how the traffic is flowing and what, what does the customer get to um, from the paid ad? You, know, you want to make sure that it makes sense. If they're driving the landing pages, how will they be optimized for conversion? Do they, test, do they split test the text ads for each ad group? Right? A lot of times, a company will go in and they'll do a set and forget it type of play where they'll set up a drain cleaning ad group and there'll be one ad. right? Well, if you only got one ad, you don't know which version of the ad is getting a higher click-through rate, right? And so you can improve it. So they should always be running two ads. You know, basic direct response says you have a control, and you try and beat the control. So whatever ad's converting best, that one stays, and then each month or each week, you introduce a new ad. And, okay, this, this ad, you know, 600 impressions, and this was the click-through rate. This ad wins. It stays but you should always be testing because once you find something that beats the control, then you've got something that's going to potentially convert better over time, right? So you drop out your control and then you try and beat that control. I mean, that should be happening on a consistent basis within your pay-per-click campaign. You want to ask if that's in place. And then will you be, at, will you be leveraging um, ad extensions to make my text ad stand out in the results? And then what are the targets in terms of cost per lead and return on investment. So do they have a target that they're shooting for for cost per lead? Do they have a targeted minimum return on investment for PPC? These are great things. If you have a provider that you can ask all these questions and get smart answers from, you can feel pretty confident that you're headed in a, in a good direction. So there's a couple questions that came in. Matt asked, how much is an appropriate management fee? I mean, that really depends. It depends upon how big the campaign is, it depends upon how aggressively you're targeting, it depends upon how many ad groups. Um, you know, I would say somewhere between you know, $1,000 to $1,500 per month 
probably a, a fair management fee, but if you're only spending a thousand in spend, it would probably be an exorbitant fee. So it really it really depends upon your situation. Um, you know, I think somewhere around a thousand dollars is it's a pretty fair management fee for a well structured, well managed pay per click campaign. So how we do things a little bit differently, and why I believe our pay per click campaigns within plumbing and HVAC are better. Uh, we do split t t split test it. We do split the campaign into strategic strategic ad groups based on our experience working with again hundreds of plumbing and HVAC companies. Uh, we set up conversion optimized landing pages either within the existing site or within uh, a micro conversion site to, to really maximize the conversion rate. Uh, we set up true conversion optimization so that your your conversions, the calls and web forms are tracked and associated with the campaign in AdWords so that we can make adjustments. You know exactly what came through pay-per-click versus organic. You know which keywords within your AdWords campaign drove which calls and at what cost. Um, this makes it possible for us to optimize based on the keywords that result in calls and stop wasting money on terms that don't add any result. Uh, for each ad group, we set up multiple ads and we rotate based on what's converting best each month so that our click-through rates and quality score improves over time. Uh, we provide you with our KPI dashboard to help track the most important metrics so you know, here's what I spent, here's what my cost per lead was, here's my projected return on investment. If you happen to be a Service Titan user, we report against revenue generated through ROI tracking. So we will get into your Service Titan campaign. We'll, we'll be looking at that with you on a monthly basis to really hold ourselves accountable and really have that secondary level of, um, of true return on investment tracking. And of course, complete transparency in, in spend. So with us, you know exactly how much you spent on management fees and how much actually went to your Google AdWords campaign. So I've showed this a couple times, but this is this is our dashboard that we provide you with. So you you know you've got these easy boxes you can look at live and on a monthly basis. You know here's how much we spent, here's how many leads we generated, here's the average cost per lead, and then the the second page of the report that that I hadn't really shown is the projected return on investment. Right. So this just takes some industry benchmarks, multiplies things out, so that assuming you hit basic industry metrics. Um, this is what your return on investment would be. So that's you know that's how we bring pay per click to, to the fold. We kind of showed you a couple examples. Uh, we kind of walked you through what you need to do in order to maximize your pay per click campaign. We walked you through what what to ask your current provider and or a provider if you're thinking about having somebody handle this for you. Um, if you'd like to talk with us about handling your pay per click strategy and or how, handling your overall internet marketing program. We'd love to talk with you. You can call us at 866-610-4647, or you can go directly to plumberseo.net slash schedule. That's plumberseo.net slash schedule. Um, there you get access to our calendar, and we can schedule a time to talk about your business, what you're looking to do, and talk about how we might be able to help. So I'd love to open up for questions. You guys have been asking me questions throughout the sessions. Thank you so much for keeping it interactive. I really hope you got value from today's session. And um, let me know what questions you have and or go to homerseo.net slash schedule. And I put a link in there for your for your reference. And I got a bunch of you guys still on with me live, which is awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, I will be sending you guys uh, the, the slides because this is one of those presentations that lends itself well to having the slides as well as the, the bonuses that I promised, right? The, the list of keywords, the online dominance blueprint, and the, and the checklist. So Will's asking, is it difficult to create a dashboard like ours? Yes, it is. Uh, we invested a lot of time and a lot of energy to get that set up. So um, if you'd like to talk about setting up a custom dashboard like that for yourself, uh, reach out to me offline. We can have a conversation around it. But it's not, uh, it's not easy. Um, it takes, you've got to pull data from a lot of different places, right? So you'd have to pull data from Google AdWords, you'd have to pull data from management fees, you'd have to pull data from uh, call tracking and from web form conversion and from Google Analytics, and then you have to be able to divide and multiply um, industry benchmarks, average cost per lead, uh, average transaction value, um, and, and things like that. So can it be done? Yes. Um, is it difficult? 
Sure, of course. If it was easy, everyone would have a dashboard like that, right? Awesome. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions, so thank you guys so much for joining me on today's session. Uh, I hope it was of value to you. Uh, I'd love to talk with you about your internet marketing strategy, your internet marketing campaign. So feel free to call us again at 866-610-4647. And uh, yes, Julian, the recording, the, the session is being recorded, so I'll be sure to send you a, um, a recording of this as well at some point uh, down the road. All right, guys, thanks for joining me live. I will, I will talk to you later.